All right, welcome everyone to the Tuesday, February 8, 2022, Oceanside Unified School District Board of Education regular meeting. Um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. I'm gonna do a roll call. Um, board members, when I say your name, say here. I'll start with Raquel Alvarez. Here. Thank you, Mike Blessing. Here. Welcome, Eric Joyce. Here. Awesome. And Eleanor Evans. Here. All right. All board members are present and accounted for. We're going to go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Eleanor has graciously offered to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'll turn it over to her. I would request that you please stand and place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you're standing, please be seated. Thank you, Eleanor. Our next item on the agenda is public report of action taken in closed session. So tonight, item 1C, um, conference with legal counsel. With a 5-0 vote, the board approved the placement of a student in a non-CDE certified residential treatment center and the request of a waiver from the California Department of Education. This is the OAH case number 202-106-0016. That's all I have to report out. Uh, actions in closed session. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of the night is student representatives. So we have three of them. I'm looking to see if they're let in yet. I see Gabby is up. Great. And let's see, do we have all of them? And Evan, sure. I see Evan. All right, thank you. Evan, we're gonna start with you tonight. Tell us what's going on at Surfside. Good evening, school board members, Dr. Vitale and guests. My name is Evan Hemerly, and I'm the student representative for Surfside Educational Academy this evening. Congratulations to our January students of the month. Leon Robles Hernandez was chosen from Surfside High School and Andrew McLaughlin was chosen from Surfside Academy. Both students received a certificate of recognition and a Surfside t-shirt. Surfside teachers and staff selected Leon and Andrew from the list of nominations. Each of them were described as hardworking, dedicated to accomplish the task at hand. Keep up the good work, Leon and Andrew. Congratulations goes out to our goes out to Shanice, who says Surfside February recipient of the Rising Star Recognition presented by the City of Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. Shanice, who is, is at senior, who is a senior at Surfside, was selected as a student representative. This young lady has faced many challenges in her life and has chosen to use them as opportunity for growth and using sensitivity and empathy toward others. After graduation, Shanice is interested in working with deaf children. On Thursday, February 3rd, Surfside's basketball team returned victorious after a 65 to one win over Ramona. The team has gained great momentum and has continued to demonstrate their hard work has paid off. Way to go, Sharks. Mr. Nick Stack at the California Conservation Corps provided a great presentation to the high school students of Surfside on January 26th. He has provided an option to students through the CCC that could lead to a career in paths of firefighting, emergency responders, and park rangers. Many questions were asked by the students and they were all left with a sense that they had another option to consider after graduation. Since the start of the school year, Surfside High School and Surfside Academy combined had nearly 100 grads. Seniors who achieved this goal demonstrated self-direction and accountability not only 
in setting the goal, but also achieving it. We are proud of their hard work. Way to make it happen, Sharks. The Surfside Library is a multi-purpose area that meets the needs of our elementary, middle school, and high school students. And for the short video, sharing some details. Thank you and have a good evening. The Surfside Library is a popular place on, on campus. Students can check out books on many different topics. The library is also used as a classroom throughout the day. All students can have their artwork displayed in the li library. The Surfside Library earning outcomes are displayed above the books. From Surfside Educational Academy, I'm Thomas Warner. Thank you, Evan, for the great report. It sounds like things are going great at Surfside. Our next student report is Oceanside High School, Gabby Kimbrell. Welcome, Gabby. Good evening, board members and Dr. Vitale. I'm Gabby Kimbrell, and I'm the ASB president at, Ocean at Oceanside. Sorry. So these are the things that we've been up to. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. So first off, um, our e-hall passes. On Monday, January 31st, our staff and students began using the e-hall pass system. Um, this eliminates the use of uh, paper waste and um, the amount of time people are um, out of class. Um, it's a great source that we've been using and it's worked very well so far. Um, there's our part, pirate swag. We have our um, student store now online, which is awesome. Um, if you guys would like to go check it out, there's that, just a few hints. Um, these are the sports we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about girls, uh, water polo, basketball, uh, wrestling in our signing day. Um, so water polo on Thursday, January 27th, uh, Mackenzie Collis and Malia Haynes um, had their first three steals. Uh, Kennedy added two more, but unfortunately they couldn't pull the win um, against Canyon Crest. And then Bella Chacon's goal and three goals by Aaliyah Bennett uh, led the Pirates six to two um, with their win against San Diego Academy later that day. Um, our girls volley, uh, our girls basketball, my bad, I'm sorry. Um, in the Avocado League, um, the girls have been playing against Sage Creek. Um, they scored 15 to four. Shout out to Nevea and Bailey, who scored 17, and uh, Leah, who scored 12 points. Um, our wrestling, the boys' wrestling team went to Hoaxville for a two day tournament. Senior Billy, um, upset the number one and number three seats. Uh, girls team competed at the North County Championship at RBV. Um, over the weekend, sophomore um, Aline is headed to CIF finals. Um, those are a few pictures of our girls and boys wrestling. Um, next slide, sorry. Awesome. So we had our signing day February 2nd during lunch. Our five OHS students, we got to celebrate. Um, Javier, uh, uh, he went to San Diego State. Um, Emily Arnold and uh, Lacey went to LA Mission College for volleyball. Bailey went to Utah State Southern for basketball. And Jonah Zimmerman is going to West Point uh, for football. Um, our academic league, um, had a game against Are You Smarter Than a 12th Grader on Thursday, February 3rd. Um, in the Performing Arts Center, staff won, but it was a close game. Our photography class went to Balboa Park um, and explored the museums and learned about new picture taking techniques. Sorry. Um, and you can play this video, and it was created by OHS students about our OHS pride. Welcome to Oceanside High School. 
the heart of downtown Oceanside, less than a mile away from the beach. Our beautiful campus prioritizes outdoor spaces with most of our walkways being at one with nature. We show our pirate pride through our new and improved Wally Malaflua Gymnasium. Wally Malaflua was the first Samoan teacher at Oceanside High School. He was a mentor and a coach to generations of students. Now, this is where our amazing team works hard year after year in pursuit of championships. If you're not one for sports, the Science and Technology Building may be to your liking. In this building, you have Math, Science, and the Environmental Innovations Engineering Academy pathway. We value our environment and we care about the world we leave behind future generations of Oceanside students. Still not your cup of tea, we also have a state-of-the-art theater we call the PAC. We want to create a creative outlet for our students, a safe place where our students can be themselves. This new addition seats over 500 people and is designed to accommodate professional level theater productions. It also has our Academy of Justice virtual training simulators. Oceanside High School's library is a place where so many students find their love and passion for academics. A place where no two stories are the same. Here, we value education and the knowledge you can only get from inside a book. The John Carroll Stadium is home to number 55 Junior Seau and our pirate football team, who have won 16 CIF championships since 1962, with legendary coach Carroll. Underneath the bleachers is our very own weight room, which all the students have an opportunity to use. Our incredible baseball field is the home ground of our baseball and softball teams. These teams have many up-and-coming players, and the coaches are using everyone's strength to hopefully give us a good season. The Senior Hall is the oldest building on campus. The rooms are smaller, but the environment is more comfortable. It is also home to our Wall of Fame. This is where we showcase our alumni, who excel in their line of work. We take pride in our campus and how we integrate our environment, studies, and the importance of our culture into our community. Welcome to Oceanside High School. We hope you loved it as much as us. Awesome. And what's on the horizon is our Spirit Week, which is next week, our Winter Pep Rally, our Winter Formal Dance um, at the Vista Optimist Club, President's Week, and New Pirate Day in night, um, March 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. I like the drone footage on that video. That was nice. Cool. All right. Next up is Liliana Teta from El Camino High School. Lily. Hi. Good evening, everyone, and thank you to Board President Dr. Biggin and the rest of the board members, to Superintendent Dr. Vitality and her executive staff, and all who are present this evening for giving me the time to speak. My name is Lily Tita, and I'm the ASB President and Super Repre Student Representative from El Camino High School. Starting off the week of January 10th to January 14th, this was the first week back from break, and our students were getting back into the swing of things on campus. Our baseball program also held a youth camp this week. The following week of January 17th through the 21st, the Rock Band Club performed in front of Cat's Corner during lunch. Next, our Dance 3 and ECDC had their show Friday night. Our January Rising Star of the Month was Marlon Benitez Venegas. Marlon is an extraordinarily bright young lady who has persevered through some challenging times. Her determination, focus, and character has led her to be a strong, passionate scholar and leader she is today. Marlon is on track to graduate with honors and receive the seal of biliteracy in Spanish and attend the university upon graduation. Thank you to the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce for recognizing our amazing scholars. Continuing the week of January. Lily, we lost you. You have to, t you muted for some reason. You want to try again? Oh, yeah. Okay. Continuing yeah. the week of January 24th to the 28th, our PAL students wrote positive messages all over campus. Our drama department also held auditions for their next production, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. This week's athletic athlete of the week was Ella Walker being recognized as a girls water polo goalie. Here are some highlights of our athletics at EC. Girls basketball is dominating by a winning streak of athlete, of athlete 11 games. They beat Oceanside High School twice, 61 to 27 and 68 to 28. Girls soccer made history by defeating Torrey Pines for the first time ever, winning three to one. 
Girls water polo beat RBV 24 to three and Oceanside 14 to eight. Boys soccer tied RBV four to four, beat Mission Vista three to one and tied Carlsbad one to one. Boys basketball brought home four victories beating Orange Vista 67 to 65, beat Oceanside twice 55 to 43 and 46 to 41, RBV 71 to 62 and Vista 60 to 43. Wrestling dominated RBV 54 to 18 and defeated Orange Glen 39 to 27. Thank you all so much for giving me the time to present. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Lily. All right, moving on to our next item, approval of the agenda, item 2E. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a first and a second. See no questions, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item three, which is reports. We're going to start with 3A. I'll turn it over to Dr. Vitale for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Begin. I want to thank uh, all the students for their excellent reports. And I think that that video could give Mr. Donald Benz a run for his money on OSIDE Week in a Minute. That was an outstanding video. So I want to thank the students from OHS for sharing that with us. Uh, we're also proud to recognize uh, Stuart Mesa for receiving the pr Purple Star School recognition from the state of California. This is the first time the state uh, has given schools the honor of this distinction. And Stuart Mesa was one of only 30 schools recognized uh, for this distinction. And it is for military connected schools and the supports that the school offers. So congratulations to the staff and community at Stuart Mesa. Last week, I had the opportunity to, um, uh, I, I'm looking for a word, watch. Uh, watch, uh, observe our students um, engage in their portrait of a graduate work and students from all of our secondary schools um, came together and uh, were asked various questions to consider uh, the future and how we're preparing them for the future and what their needs might be in the future. And their responses um, and their honest thoughts were so um, just beautiful, heartwarming, and uh, I just appreciate their time, their energy, their honesty towards helping us provide the best educational experience possible. So for all of those students who participated, thank you so much. And for the adults that came with them on that field trip, I know we didn't go very far, but at least we got to go on a field trip and all be together. So thank you all for that. And uh, Gabby shared that OHS has their uh, pride store up and running. And I wanna let everybody know that Oceanside Unified also has that pride store up and running with um, gear for the new logo. We have no affiliation with the store and we don't make any money from the store. Uh, but if you want something with the Oceanside logo on it, um, you can find the link on our website. I've ordered a sweatshirt and a hat and can't wait to receive those. So with all of that, uh, great news and just a lot of excitement from our students, I turn it back over to you, President Begin. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. I haven't bought anything from the store yet. I'll have to do that. Retail therapy later. So we're going on to item 3B, board reports. I'm going to start with Vice President Raquel Alvarez. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have much, but I did um, attend an LCAP meeting this week. Um, that was great to have those communications going on of, um, as we get ready to put out some surveys for our families and just making sure that the verbiage on it is good and strong for all to be able to understand and to report back of, of how our district is doing. Um, I went to an OHS advisory council meeting and the reports are great from what um, what is going on there on the campus and how the support, um, the mental support and everything that's going on there. Thank you so much to OHS for doing that um, and including us in that process. Um, I did a school site visit at Jefferson just to kind of get an idea before the, the mods happen and stuff. And so I just, I'm saddened by the, the look of everything, but excited of what we're looking forward to and what's going to happen on that campus. Um, thank you to Rebecca for inviting me into her classroom. Um, those fifth graders and the energy are much needed um, health medication that I need because I love that. And so thank you, Rebecca, for doing that. Um, and to all that class because they were fun and loving and engaging and just welcoming. So thank you so much for that. Um, and that's about all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Raquel. I'm gonna move on over. I'm just going across the screen. Eric Joyce. 
Good evening. Um, so I have a couple of highlights. One, I attended the Career Technical Education Advisory Committee, which is just, again, mind-blowing. Every time I go to that committee, the work that our high schools are doing in career in CTE or Career Technical Education is, is really mind-blowing. There are students who are designing houses that you know can be on the bottom of the ocean and so these tiny houses that they're doing the full mock-ups for, like uh, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. That's just one of the of the you know courses that they're working on. Those the projects were really mind blowing. So um, I look forward to finding ways that we can get the word out about the work that they're doing. Uh, another was a meeting with the Crown Heights families and uh, that were expressing a financial and uh, difficult hardship on their ability to get their students to school because of the long distance from their uh, home school, home zone school. So I know that we're gonna be working uh, as the best we can with them to make sure that um, they're able to get to school um, effectively for their kids because you gotta be there to, to learn. So, um, and then the third one is the Ethnic Studies Community Forum, which we held, which was so wonderful. Again, a very positive uh, experience. Almost all the um, comments from the community were, were positive. It was, uh, I was extremely proud and most proud of our former students who are still young people who are in college or just gotten through college, who came back and, and took the time to come back to this forum and, and let us know that they were really excited that we were taking the lead on ethnic studies in our area and that the history that they felt like they had learned in high school was incomplete now they've been in college courses and that and they're just really excited to help support the efforts that we're having with ethnic studies course and so i'm uh, i'm excited to work with them that's really incredible but um, thank you thanks eric you sound busy awesome um eleanor evans what do you have to share hi hi everybody some of it's going to be redundant what's been said already so i'll just mention it I, before I start though, I'd like to acknowledge the land that we on, that we live on, and it's basically the it traditional territory of the Sueño uh, native people, indigenous people. I have a shout out to Oda. I want them to be aware that they now have a new um, CTA board of director for region four, and that's Keisha Bowden, who is also um, the president of Down South of SDEA. So you need to get in contact with her. Um, for this month, I attended the, the um, Leon Williams San Diego County Human Relations Commission and Committee. And we're looking for students or individuals between 16 and 24 to be youth members of the commission. So if you're interested, please go to the County of San Diego website. I attended the North County Prevention um, Committee. And again, um, they're focusing on, you know, not doing drugs, um, not smoking, not um, keeping healthy. That's the bottom line. And of course, you know, they're associated with the hospital, Tri-City Hospital, but apparently once again, they are in need of funding, so. Congratulations to Robbie Hess for um, the Martin Luther King Prayer Breakfast and receiving the City of Oceanside's um, Community Service Award. And our own um, Eric Joyce was also nominated for that. Okay. Um, I really, really enjoy the CTA program. I'm sorry, CTE program. And it's just phenomenal. I agree very much with what Eric is saying in terms of having our having our, our youth being involved with something like that, hands-on and seeing the connection between you know, the academic world and the um, work world. I, I think it's just phenomenal. And ethnic studies, I also attended. Um, hear, the, hear the community overwhelming response for ethnic studies is phenomenal. It was a, uh, a meeting that was extremely well organized. Everyone had the opportunity to speak 
everyone spoke very well. And it's again, you know, like as I've said over and over again, we're at the we're the vanguard, we're at the forefront of ethnic studies as far as the state is concerned. I attended the portrait of a graduate, and it was the opportunity for the adults to share their expectations and goals for our scholars. And this was extremely uplifting and, and empowering for me to realize that um, we're thinking not, not just here and now, but we're thinking in terms of um, what our future students are going to need and where they're going to be. Okay. Oh, um, Stacy will probably talk about um, TW. Yeah, so I'll, I'll save that. February is Black History Month. And I, I'd like to salute all of our counselors as this is school counseling week. And with Stacy, with Trustee Stacy, we had to, I had the opportunity to visit McAuliffe School. And that was that was fun. That was reassuring at the same time. It was um, enlightening. And that's my report. Thanks, Eleanor. Mike, do you have anything to report? Uh, you got to unmute. I know. <laughs> Boomer, <laughs> my apologies. Um, no report tonight, but I appreciate uh, all the work that. Um, you guys are doing out there and, and all the work that everybody's doing to, to enable you guys to report on the good things that are happening in the district. And it's, it's just fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Um, real quickly, I attended a two-way bilingual immersion meeting. Um, my son is in the pioneer group of it and he's in eighth grade in an AP class right now, which is exciting. And we got together working with parents and teachers to look at how to recruit students into our two-way bilingual immersion program. And speaking from experience as a parent, my son is doing tremendous and the teachers are phenomenal. So if you're curious about that, check out our website. Um, I also went over to McAuliffe and amazing teachers over there doing amazing things. Checked out their campus and several classrooms with Eleanor. And that was, I haven't done a site visit in a while because of COVID. So it was great to see everybody. And we got to see a morning meeting in the morning and it was, it was awesome. So thank you teachers over there and the principal for inviting us. I also met with teachers from MLK and FUSA and Jefferson. Um, we have over 20 teachers right now that are interested in pursuing national board certification. And that's really exciting. It's very rigorous. And just in the midst of all this work they're doing and with coming off the tail end of COVID, to even think about the work they need to do for that and they're gung-ho. So I'm excited to see how that goes. I also attended the LCAP stakeholder meeting with Raquel and yeah, we I got to work on the secondary questionnaire for students and it's great collaboration. So that's my board report tonight. Our next item on the agenda is item 3C and we're gonna hear from our labor partners. Our first labor partner is California School Employees Association, the Oceanside Chapter 370. And we're gonna hear from Dora Jaramayo. So Dora, Good welcome. evening. Uh, thank you so much. Good evening, President Began, Board, Superintendent and Cabinet members. Thank you so much for this time that's being allocated uh, to allow me to present and showcase uh, some pictures and some of the things that our CSEA classified members are doing right now. Uh, next slide, please. What's been going on? Um, many of our classified staff members from ESS have been sent out to our school sites to help schools uh, site offices during the staff shortages. Many custodians are working 12 hour shifts, eight hours regular time plus overtime to help maintain our school sites clean and safe by supporting custodial staff shortages. Classified members are supporting each other to maintain healthy behaviors such as walking during breaks. We all need that right now. Sci staff are supporting positive student behaviors by distributing rewards for students who are caught behaving kindly towards others. So we're definitely working together for the good of all students. Next slide. 
We have a couple of site recognitions. At El Camino, we are recognizing uh, Maggie Duenas, she's an office assistant. Jill Risuto and Rosa Flanagan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the last name, they're guidance technicians at uh, El Camino. And their counselor, Kathleen McCann, would like to recognize the EC Counseling Center support team, Maggie Duenas, Jill Risuto, and Rosa Flanagan. Together, they maintain the flow of the counseling center, working with everything from documentation to registration and student support. The EC school counselors and school psychologists would not function without them. They are the wheel that makes the counseling center roll. Next slide, please. Another one from Jefferson. This one, they are recognizing Lucero Rodriguez. She's the school secretary and her Linda Ahmad. She's the health technician. Um, from Nicole Van, the administrative secretary who's recognizing them, I would like to recognize our school secretary, Lucero, and our site health technician, Herlinda. They have very different roles, however, share the goal of maintaining student safety and creating a positive environment by promoting responsibility and consciousness. Next slide, please. And here we have a couple of pictures of some of our office staff at Oceanside High School. Um, while they're doing the work supporting our students and our parents. Next slide. And what CACA is looking forward to and what we're currently working. Uh, we are currently working with our administrators for professional growth, MOU, and that's to support our classified members to continue their education and grow professionally. Uh, we are also encouraging CSCA to donate to the Catastrophic Lead Bank. This helps our members during extenuated circumstances due to illness or medical procedures. Classified Staff Employee of the Year is out. It is time of the year when we honor two of our Oceanside's outstanding classified employees. Uh, nominations are due February 19th, and I believe they need to be submitted to Christine Garrison at the district office. Next slide, please. I believe that's the last one, I'm so sorry. So once again, uh, we are working together. I'm oh, sorry, am I done? Yes, sorry. No, you're good, keep going okay. Dora. So our, our members are working together, not only to make sure and ensure that all the work is getting done at all of our school sites, but also to make sure that our students are being taken care of, our parents are being taken care of. And another one of my favorite quotes from Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. So that's what we're focusing on, that's our goal. And we want to work together with our administrators and our teachers and everyone in our district community. Thank you so much for this time allocated for me to present our classified staff. Thank you, Dora. Thank you. And thanks for all the work you, you guys are doing. It's great. Um, item 3D, Oceanside Teachers Association, um, President Tiffany Ortega. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Dora, that was awesome. Thank you for that inspiring presentation. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So good evening, I'm Tiffany Cooper Ortega and I'm honored to be able to report on behalf of the accomplished and esteemed members of the Oceanside Teachers Association as their president. OTA members and leadership worked with OUSD on our ongoing committee work that's listed here. Additionally, we worked with HR to start planning for that new legislation that we are so excited about that's going to provide coverage of absences that are COVID related. Next slide. So I'd like to introduce you to Joe Anita Washburn. I love this time. I love being able to talk about some of the amazing things our members do. So you may recognize her and you should because she's been inspiring a love of music in OUSD for 36 years. She's taught at every school level, elementary, middle and high and at 10 different schools actually beginning her career as an interim ECHS band teacher. She currently teaches band, orchestra, and all levels of those classes and chorus at Cesar Chavez Middle School. Next slide, please. Ms. Washburn not only teaches the academics of music that are required for making music and that inspires a love of music with her young scholars, she also provides amazing opportunities that help her students experience music at a competitive level, a professional level, and in social settings. 
In these photos, you can see Chavez scholars at Disneyland participating in a recording soundtrack session and receiving a behind the scenes look at a professional recording session for Disney movies. Advanced band and orchestra scholars also attend the band and orchestra festival at EC where they prepare three selections and perform on stage before adjudicators from the Southern California School Band and Orchestra Association. Next slide, please. Eighth grade students from Chavez attend the high school band night at an ECHS home football game. They learn some of the spirit songs and they get to play alongside their high school counterparts and enjoy the high school marching band experience. Ms. Washburn also instructs chorus at Chavez Middle School. And in these photos, students perform the Star Spangled Banner at a Padres game at Petco Park with other San Diego County chorus students and perform for their fellow chorus students from across the district at the district chorus share night. Next slide. So pre-pandemic, the numbers of students that wanted to enroll in music had been really high. However, during virtual instruction, music programs across the nation lost students. I mean, can you imagine how hard it is to learn embouchure via Zoom? I'm hoping my fellow band superstars will get that. And teaching music during the pandemic certainly has its struggles as well. Can you imagine teaching embouchure via Zoom? However, the exciting news is that the enrollment at the Chavez Music Program is starting to increase and there are many new players this year. The EC band mom and me is really happy to hear that. Next slide. Finally, I wanna say that I know Ms. Washburn because I was fortunate enough to work with her at Del Rio, but also she is one of the few lucky OUSD teachers who survived, I mean, taught all four of my children. So as an OUSD colleague, Ms. Washburn, I wanna tell you that I'm honored to work with you. And as an OUSD parent, I thank you for affording these experiences and this passion for music to my own children and other OUSD students. Next slide. Finally, I wanna spotlight the update of OUSD facilities. ODA members are excited to see the work from Prop H begin at San, San Luis Rey, also known as Pablo Talk and Jefferson Middle School and other areas around our district. We hope the board continues that strong momentum to approve the rebuilds at Surfside and Reynolds. We see that the district office is on the agenda for tonight using developer fees and other restrict, restricted funds. And I have to admit, I'm often asked um, as the ODA president, what I think of this. Well, I'm gonna share my opinion and here's what I'll say. If our schools in highest need are slated for modernization and rebuild and our OUSD staff and students needs have been considered and addressed, we should address buildings in our district that are aged and in need of repair with these restricted one-time funds. These funds will likely not be available again and we may never have another opportunity like this one to update facilities like this for not only certificated staff that work in those offices, but also our CSEA brethren that work there. Thank you so much for the time. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, ODA members for working so hard. Keep up the hard work, guys. Thank you, Tiffany. And I have to say, Mrs. Washburn is my son's favorite teacher. And during the pandemic, she talked him into going from the viola to the standing bass. So, um, Definitely inspired my son into his music program. So thank you, Mrs. Washburn. And thank you, Tiffany, for that presentation. Our next item is general consent items. Um, and do we have any public comment tonight on our general consent items? We do. We have two. Um, Rosie Higuera on item 4C and Emily Wichman on item 4L. Great, let's go ahead and pull them up and let's have them speak before we make a motion and start voting on that. Dr. Begin, uh, Rosie Higuera is not in the room, so we can move to 4L with uh, Emily Wichman. Okay, great, thank you, Mr. Moon. All right, just a friendly reminder, and I'm sure Mrs. Wichman knows, but um, three minutes for public comment, and we're happy to receive them. Mrs. Wichman, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'm speaking on uh, consent item L, the ratification of the 2021 school accountability report. And as you know, this report summarizes the school's mission, goals, academic data, along with several other categories. I expected a presentation with the, at least the academic data. 
considering the many devastating effects of COVID nationwide, you, you would want to move forward to set a path and pathway for improving each student's learning goals, scores, and how the superintendent will accomplish that. You will need to know the stats from every school to understand programs and set expectations for students and certificated staff. I would hope you will set up a workshop to concentrate on getting our students from OUSD educated to compete with their peers in the surrounding districts for college and workforce opportunities. I worked at Laurel Elementary School during Desert Storm. At that time, it was an arts and performing school and many of our base children attended. At that time, the school district was in a crisis mode due, due to the war and the many military fathers and mothers and grandparents with military con connections. The staff held high standards, made the children's time at school one of learning, wonder, and accomplishment. Staff was compassionate, caring, and very understanding with the children, making sure of their well-being. All the children, all the children, military and those in the neighborhoods were very proud of their academic accomplishments as well as our teachers who were several of the finest of the district. The schools were havens of learning and contributed to children's stability by teaching them reading, writing, math, science, the arts, the performing arts, which they shared when their mothers and fathers returned from Desert Storm. Our district has been compassionate, caring, resilient, and can do it again. We need to ed educate our youth and our children for their futures, to be productive individuals, and to give back to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Witchman. Did our other speaker? Oh, there's Rosie. Yeah, she's available, Dr. McGinn. Rosie, you're, okay. you're up. Hello, Rosie. Uh, Rosie, you have to unmute. We cannot hear you. Okay, there we go. Yeah, All right. we can hear you. Okay, so I wanted to speak on item 4C. Um, where I guess you guys are trying to approve 824,000 uh, for class displays, boxes, mobile carts from Aerodex Industries. So my question is why we're spending so much money um, to upgrade these uh, mobile displays. That's a lot of money. And I'm also noticing on item 7A that you're seeking approval of Apple Mac mini devices for El Camino's Arts and Media uh, Pathways program to the tune of 58,000. So I wanna know what will be done with the older Mac devices that were purchased just five years prior. And um, I also read on your resolution number 25, it describes what to do with your sale and uh, of surplus items. Um, so you could either sell them, donate, or dispose of them. So it looks like to me, I mean, eight hundred over nine hundred thousand dollars is going to be spent on things that we really don't need. I mean, our test scores for our students are so low. It's it's I mean, it's shameful. Our test scores in science and in math are just unbelievable. Um, for our latest test scores, we have 28.72% in science. And in English language, uh, we have 49%. And in math, we have 33.76%. So it seems to me there is some kind of disparity here between all of the spending um, on equipment for the classroom, and we're not addressing um, the math, uh, language, science, all of these essential um things that our kids really need to learn so it just seems like this board is really not focusing on the best interests of families in oceanside and we're not um addressing our test scores here i mean our kids need help in all of these areas and let, and yet we're just going on a spending spree it's really ridiculous Ridiculous. And so I want to know where the accountability is with, with this board. Um, why is there so much rampant spending? And how come we're not addressing these issues, these main issues that our kids need to survive in the workforce once they graduate? I mean, it's really crazy. So I know that there are a couple seats that are open um, for election, and I hope that they are replaced with with people that really care about our students and our community, because this is this is a waste of money and resources, and we need to fight for our kids. 
And so kids need to be at the center of our um Thank our you, agenda. Rosie. Thank you. I, just a reminder for the public comment, if you pick an item that's on the agenda, you need to stay on that topic and not move around to other agenda items. So I'm just throwing that out there. And next time I will call people out of order. But moving on to, so, we have to, go ahead. Is there someone else? Yeah, I was just going to say this is on agenda item. So just a response, um, these, these displays are teaching tools that are to enhance the skills of our educators in the classroom. They are mobile, so it creates a flexible learning environment. So our modern teachers are able to pull small groups, use these kind of displays to use their classroom and break it apart into flexible groupings where they can be responsive to student need and really teach in a 21st century environment. So I'm really proud that we're gonna make sure that they have the, the tools they need to be successful teachers. Uh, as well as the curriculum that you so. Thanks, Eric. Great. I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Eleanor. I have a first and a second. Are there any questions for staff or more comments? Seeing none from my fellow board members, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving the general consent item, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on, we have a presentation. Uh, the annual update for the 2021-2022 Local Control Accountability Plan. I'll turn this over to staff. Good evening, Board of Education. We have a slide deck that we'll be sharing. Good evening, board. Tonight, I'll be sharing with you the annual uh, update. It's a supplement to the mid with a mid-year report, and this is an information-only uh, item. Next slide, please. This report is a special one-time report outlined in Ed Code to help build transparency around the funding received by local educational agencies to address student needs caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are four components to this report. The first one is the supplement to the annual update for the 2021 LCAP. The second is uh, mid-year outcome data related to the metrics or data outlined in our LCAP. There's a mid-year expenditure report on all actions and an update on our budget overview for parents. Next slide, please. The first component is the one-time supplement to the annual LCAP update. Next slide, please. We will be outlining the ways that we have fostered community engagement, allocated our concentration uh, grant add-on funding, how we've used the one-time federal COVID-19 funds, including the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 and other ESSER funds, and of course, how we've used other fiscal resources and, and provided the applicable plans that are tied to those fiscal resources. Next slide, please. We've engaged our educational partners through our outreach to uh, our community, through our LCAP advisory committee, which two of our board members do uh, sit on, our district parent advisory committee, our DPAC, our district uh, English language learner advisory committee, our special education local plan area administrator, sir, we've contributed surveys, we've had public hearings, and we've had site level engagement through our school site councils, our ELAC, our parent forums, and other uh, items such as uh, coffee with the principal. Next slide, please. So we've increased the number of staff who provide direct services to students who are low income, who are multilingual learners, and are also or experiencing poverty or foster youth. We have assigned intervention teachers in our TK through eighth grade schools. We have MTS and multilingual learner teachers on special assignments that provide support to our classroom educators through professional learning. We have increased our elementary assistant principals and counselors to full time at all of our school sites. 
and we have, under the leadership and direction of our board, uh, established four community schools who all have for uh, a community school coordinator who is a manager and a leader who is going to help provide the supports at those sites. Next slide, please. In allocating our one-time federal funds, we use the same educational partner forums and processes that we did with the LCAP. This enabled us to create a coherent aligned plan for our students that maximizes all of our resources to support student achievement as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide, please. We know that with every plan that we have implementation successes and challenges. The success we have had in implementing uh, our Essler funds in our actions have been really around purchasing of PPE where we lead the county in the most amount of PPE provided. We have had expanded learning opportunities through summer school and after school and before school supports. We have increased staffing across schools. We have provided resources for supporting students' mental health, providing technology such as displays and devices, and providing access to the internet at no or low cost to students and families who need it at home. We've launched assessment tools to monitor student progress in meeting goals so that we, are sure we can continue to monitor and adjust student progress as we move forward. We have had challenges, especially around finding substitute teachers, our facilities upgrades and receiving some instructional materials due to national and local supply chain and labor shortages. Next slide, please. We felt from the beginning that it's really important that we create alignment with all of our applicable plans and prepare, and we've prepared a one pager that shows how all of our resources are aligned to our LCAP goals. Next slide, please. This chart shows how the key actions outlined in and funded by our COVID funds and our LCAP funds with supplemental and concentration are all aligned around key areas that we can use to improve student outcomes, health and well being, and safety. Next slide, please. Now we know that plans are only the first step in achieving our goals. We must monitor the outcome data and ensure that we are on the right track. So we want to make sure that we look at the data and the metrics as we progress through the school year to ensure that as we find uh, opportunities for improvements or we need to monitor our or adjust our plans, we are able to do so. Next slide, please. On this slide, you can see in bold the target metric or targets for several of our action items. The items in regular text are our actual mid-year achievements. We identify that we have a high quality of teachers assigned to all of our classrooms and students have access to educational materials and options around a wide variety of courses, electives, music, to TWBI, uh, science, history, um, and athletics. We are closely monitoring um, our attendance because our attendance rate of our students is lower than expected. And this is due primarily to the Delta and Omicron variants transmission and the increased case rates and the need to create, uh, um, to be sure that we're continuing to health and safety. While we had lower attendance rates than we would have wanted, school has been open for in-person instruction throughout this entire year. Next slide, please. The next section of the report has the highlights of our expenditures and our actions. Next slide, please. Our goal one, we outlined earlier that we have increased our counseling and administrative support at each of our school sites and provided resident certified subs and intervention teachers at all of our school sites. While we have budgeted certain amounts, we have a mid-year update of what we've expended so far and as we're moving forward in our implementation. The next slide, please, is about providing safe and positive learning environments. This is our LCAP goal number two. We have provided support staff for social emotional learning for all students and targeted counseling for by mental health providers and specialists for students who need more direct and intensive support. Next slide, please. We want to make sure as well that we ensure that we can support our families as we continue to prioritize our school com community advisors our parent, guardian, and caregiver learning opportunities, and our site-specific family engagement opportunities that we've planned for the spring. 
We know that with the uh, reduction in case rates that we will be able to invite parents and community guardians and caregivers into our schools in the spring in a more robust way. Next slide, please. The fourth component is around our budget update on the major expenditures that our district has allocated to support student learning, how much we've received so far, and how much we expect, uh, expect to expend in the future. Next slide, please. These two graphs outline the amounts of funding we've been allocated by the state. The total projection is what was promised to our district at the start of the year. The actual to date identifies the funding that we've actually received so far, and the new projection is the current promise to Oceanside in the manner of funding. Next slide, please. The pandemic has presented new opportunities and challenges over the past two years. As we've heard before, our teams are coming together carefully and we have worked to ensure that student learning and safety and health and well-being are our priority. We've had to respond to challenges on a weekly and sometimes daily basis. Supply chain interruptions, staffing shortages, and evolving health protocols have impacted our work throughout the past two years. But under the leadership of our Board of Education and our superintendent, Dr. Vitale, the hard work of our teachers, our classified staff and the faith and support of our families have allowed us to continue to meet the students and refine our work. We will continue to improve our processes and systems in the coming years to address the needs of all of our students, especially our students experiencing homelessness and poverty, students living with foster families, our multilingual learners and our students with disabilities. We know that together we will use this fund, we will be good stewards of the money and be able to provide those supports to all of our students so that we can provide a world-class education for all of our students. Thank you for listening to this informational report. Thank you, Dr. Levy. Do we have any questions for staff about the LCAP presentation? Yeah, <clears throat> the chronic absenteeism being um, so dramatically higher than, than uh, in the past, I know we have a reason for it um, with COVID, but what are we, I'd like, if it's not tonight, I know this isn't in the LCAP, but what are we gonna do to address that through the spring? I know case rates rate will go down and that'll be part of that, but it'd be good to get an update, um, either maybe next meeting or the following on what we can do to improve that. Absolutely, we do. We have already seen a reduction from the height um, upon return from um, the winter break. Uh, we were at the height of case transmission throughout the state and uh, county. And as a result, uh, we had many students who were exposed and many students who were testing positive for COVID-19. And based on the CDPH guidelines, they were required to um, stay home. That contributed to a lot of the chronic absentee rates. But we've taken a lead in our district to provide the most opportunities for students to have in-person events such as proms and dances and um, opportunities to come back to school through a test to stay program and now through a uh, overall return to school uh, approach. So just in the past uh, few days uh, I visited a school uh, this week and the teacher told me I have all 25 of my students in school today. We're doing the lesson. We're on the road to recovery and I visited about five schools in the last two weeks and all the principals have shared we are back on track track and students are excited and teachers are excited. So we can definitely talk more about how we are going to continue that great momentum and um, come out of this stronger. And then the other one that I just wanted to plant a flag in was um, our parent feedback and community feedback. I think we do have a lot of different ways that we collect feedback. But one thing that I tend to notice when I'm in those meetings is um, we're not uh, at least from what I've observed, we don't usually say this is where you're giving feedback on how we should spend our one-time COVID funding. I don't think that was ever, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember that ever being made clear. That's what we were asking in those questions. So there's an informed feedback that I think we could be continue to grow better at so that our parents and community members know exactly what their feedback is being used for and how it's going to inform. I mean, sometimes it's so important. And if they don't know, this is like, you know, this is how we're going to spend $30 million, then, you know, they might see it as like another survey and not really mm -hmm. see the, the whole 
view of it. So I'd really like us to focus on that too, communication wise. Um, otherwise, that was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Any other questions from my colleagues? All right. All right, moving on to our next item that would, did not require a vote. That was just a presentation. Our next item is item six, personnel. 6A is the approval of the revised certificated job description. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Magnus here. Thank you, President Begin and board members. Uh, as often is the case, HR brings job descriptions for approval. I have two job descriptions that would uh, are for consideration for revisions. These revisions include updated language for the job functions, as well as to better accurately reflect the positions. Both these um, job descriptions were last approved in 2018. Uh, the two are for the teacher on special assignment, English multi-tiered support system. And the second one is teacher on special assignment, college and career readiness. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make the motion to approve. A second. A first and a second. Are there any questions for Dr. McIntyre? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving these new revised certificated job descriptions, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item seven, curriculum and instruction. Item 7A is the approval of purchase of Apple Mac mini devices for art, media, and entertainment pathway at El Camino High School. Mercedes uh, has I'm sorry, I was uh, no had to intermute myself. So this is the approval of the Apple Mac mini devices for the arts media, uh, media entertainment pathway at El Camino High School. This is funded through our CTIG grant. So this is a special funding that's targeted for career technical education. And the devices that we have before will actually be moved to Martin Luther King uh, Middle School so that the eighth graders can have an opportunity to use them and then have the more modern devices when they transition into the uh, high school for their pathway. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. second. We have a first and a second. Are there any questions for Dr. Lovey? Just a comment. This is an award-winning program. They, I think they went to New York this year to be recognized on their amazing submission. I mean, again, this is one of those CT that pathways. I didn't even have a chance to explain how amazing they are and the things they're doing because there are so many. But you know, this program is outstanding, and I'm so glad that we were able to get grant funding to support it. Well done, Steph. That's good news. Great. Seeing no more questions? I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7A, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 7B, acceptance of United Healthcare grant to support community school initiative at Jefferson Middle School. And we do have a public comment on this, but I'll let staff explain. So we're really uh, excited uh, about the opportunity to have community schools here in Oceanside Unified School District. Last spring, our Board of Education challenged us to develop these schools and these opportunities um, at four of our schools that have families who are, who are most under-resourced. And as a result of that, we have our four community uh, school coordinators. And we started finding out that there were people in our community uh, businesses and uh, individuals who want to support the idea of a community school that has the opportunity to remove all barriers to students achieving outstanding economic, outstanding academic um, achievement. Mm. And so we were able to write a grant for United Healthcare grant for $75,000, which will be used to create a wellness center right at Jefferson Middle School that will be able to provide opportunities for health services to come in, learning about wellness, mindfulness, 
um, be able to help students to understand the dangers of vaping and other substance uh, dependencies and will allow us to even possibly have a place for students to exercise. Um, that's some of the plans that we have in place. So we're very uh, excited to have this partnership with United Healthcare grant and to have that $75,000 to revamp that wellness center right in Jefferson Middle School. Thank you, Dr. Levy. So I'm gonna take public comment before we start voting. Colleagues, um, Patty is our um, public comment. And I wanna remind you, um, it says Pat, so I'm calling you Patty because that's what it says in my thing. So Patty, I just wanna remind you that you're speaking to the item 7B, which is the acceptance of the United Healthcare Grant. So just, just a reminder, you have three minutes. Go ahead, Patty, welcome. I think you have to unmute yourself. Found it. There you uh, go. Yeah, I lost my other screen that described that, but I it was just a quick question and just quickly looking over the agenda. I I find it odd that um, I mean I guess you can justify it under, but that this would be under curriculum instruction because it's definitely um, you know, should be under some other service. Um, this is not you know, this is health, not curriculum, not instruction, right? Am I right? I find it odd that it was under curriculum and instruction number seven. <clears throat> Just a question. Okay, are you done? Uh, is there an answer? Well, we can address that when we start talking. Okay, do we, if you address it, do then we get to ask for the questions because there's no interaction on a discussion here, but. So we, during public comment, you get to make a public comment. The board can choose to address that with our discussion after, but we will not engage in the discussion with you and answer your questions. So if you have a list of questions, feel free to provide them now during your public comment. Oh, okay. Well, I understand the whole, um, it used to be community schools were a volunteer thing provided by the parents and the and the administration and they would all kind of get together and it it wouldn't be all this grants and funding thing i mean it's wonderful but um but but this is not a, a curriculum and instruction item the way i see it thank you thank you for your public comment all right so i'll make a motion to approve do i have a second i'll second it Great, and then let's, um, do we have any questions, comments? I just wanna, I, oh, thank you. I just wanna say congratulations on the district being able to obtain this kind of funding because it makes it a commitment from the community and stating that they will support community schools in the traditional sense of a community school, not a social gathering. And um, the more involved the community is on that level, the more successful the community school concept will be. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you. I would, I would just ask uh, Dr. Lavi, is this under curriculum instruction because it is under the Department of uh, Ed Services? Yeah, so educational support services um, is uh, both around curriculum instruction, including removing all barriers that may uh, be experienced by students in um, accessing their curriculum and accessing their instruction. So the nurses, our health clerks are all under the purview of the educational support services department. So the school nurses, which are credentialed by the California uh, uh, California Teaching Com Commission, they have a credential. Um, so therefore they are actually around health education. That is what our nurses do. And so they do actually report at this time um, to me and soon will be for our new, uh, for our replacement of our uh, coordinator of student services. So yes, it's definitely part of educational support services. Thanks for the explanation. Are there any more questions or comments? Just love it when you get out there and lead. This is, you know, people start noticing and want to chip in and be part of something special. So it's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Thank you again for continuing to reach out to all the community and getting out there and getting them and showing them just what amazing programs that we are offering within our schools. So thank you. 
And I've been approached by several school districts within the state about our community schools and where we're at and shared with them our last board presentation on it. And they were very impressed. So we're doing a good job. It's great. All right. I'm going to call for the vote then. All in favor of accepting this United Healthcare grant, say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries 5-0. Item 7C is the acceptance of the K-12 Strong Workforce Grant Award for the 2021-2022 for our high school engagement. Yeah, so we're very excited again with this is around uh, ensuring that we have our career technical education in place. We will have a committee that we will be looking at how do we make sure that our students are on track for productive lives and uh, full employment economic competitiveness into the future. And so we uh, were able to obtain a grant of around $36,000 that will allow us to fund a classified uh, position that will be able to support and reach out to the community so our students will be able to get high quality, skilled jobs and be competitive in the future. So we're very excited. This is again, CTE grant uh, award and very exciting for our district. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second the motion. I have a comment before we vote though. When um, Surfside was doing their presentation, they made a comment about the California Conservation Corps and how it could lead into careers. Those are very good careers and they're very high paying. And to go from high school to um, do training with CCC, and then getting us a, a state job, you know, that is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. A state or federal job, depending on which direction a student wants to go. But again, you know, we need to compliment the district on being that creative in terms of um, anticipating and, and promoting our students. Thank you. I agree. Anytime we can get money or a grant to support our schools, Seeing no more comments, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of item 7C, acceptance of the K-12 Strong Workforce Grant, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Dr. Levy. Moving on to item eight, which is our business portion of the meeting. Um, 8A is the acceptance of Proposition H, Bond, Building Fund, Independent Audit Report for 2020-2021. I'll turn it over to staff. Thank you, Dr. Begin. Proposition 39 requires strict accountability in local school construction bonds, which requires that an independent audit be conducted annually. The accounting firm of Nigro and Nigro completed the 2021 performance and financial audit for the Proposition H bond building fund. The independent audit report concludes that the district's accounting systems are functioning efficiently and effectively to account for the Proposition H bonds. In addition, the tests conducted resulted in zero findings and no recommendations related to the financials or performance of the Proposition H bond building fund for the fiscal year ended in June 30th, 2021. It is recommended that the Board of Education accept the 2021 Proposition H bond building fund independent audit report. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you guys, so I have a first and a second. Do we have any questions or comments? Well done. Yeah. All right. So, all right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of accepting item 8A, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 8B, the acceptance of the independent audit report for 2020-2021. Thank you, Dr. Begin. The California Education Code requires that an independent audit be conducted annually. The audit report is designed to provide the public with a general overview of the district's finances and to show the district's accountability for the money it receives. The accounting firm of Nigro and Nigro completed the 2021 audit. The independent audit report concludes that the district's financial reports for the 2021 year accurately represent the financial position of the district and are compliant with generally accepted accounting principles as well as other legal provisions and that proper internal controls are in place. The audit report identifies findings and includes the OUSD action plan. It is recommended that the Board of Education accept the 2021 independent audit report. 
Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. A second. Yeah. Okay. We got a first and a second. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Thank you, Eleanor. Do we have any questions or comments for staff? All right. Seeing no. none. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of item 8B, say aye. 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 Hey. Motion carries 5 0. Moving. Uh oh, I hear some. You got it? All right. <laughs> I hear a, there's a little lag time there. Item 8C. Approve the First Amendment and Second Amendment to the Purchase and Sale Agreement with MLC Land Holdings Incorporated. Thank you. At its December 14, 2021 regular meeting, the district approved the Purchase and Sale Agreement for Pacifica to Meritage. During its feasibility review period, Meritage encountered a number of unexpected environmental conditions at the property. As such, Meritage sought an amendment to the purchase and sale agreement, reducing the price and extending the feasibility review period to account for these unexpected environmental conditions and subsequent increases in cost. The districts, with the assistance of its legal counsel, negotiated amendments to the PSA to account for these unexpected costs. The first amendment to the PSA will amend the following terms of the agreement. The feasibility review period will be extended by three days and now end on February 10th, 2022. The second amendment to the PSA will amend the following terms. The purchase price will be reduced by 500,000 from 15.8 million to 15.3 million. The second deposit will be increased by 100,000 from 250,000 to 350,000. And lastly, $250,000 of the first deposit and second deposit will now be deemed non-refundable, except in the event of a seller default or the circumstances provided in Article 5 or Section 3.2. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the First Amendment and the Second Amendment to the Purchase and Sale Agreement with MLC Land Holdings, Inc. and authorize staff to proceed with execution. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll okay. second. I have a first and a second. Do I have any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 8C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 8D, approval of resolution number 24, which is the 2122 ratification of contract award. Thank you. On December 14, 2021, the Board of Education awarded the bid for the dust collector air filtration system and electrical repairs at Oceanside High School to dust collector services in the amount of $205,930,000. Due to the amount of the bid award, a resolution is required in order to determine that the cost estimate of the public agency is reasonable and the cost of the bid received exceeded the reasonable estimate due to the COVID-19 related increases. Approval of this resolution ratifies the award of this bid and satisfies the requirements of the public contract code. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve resolution number 24 as presented. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Do we have any questions or comments for staff? Good comment. I, I think this is for our one of our pathways again, and they're really looking forward to putting some of that amazing uh, equipment to use. So I think this is going to help get their their shop up and running. So I'm excited. I <laughs> Great. I agree. I can't wait to go check all those out. Great. All right. Seeing no questions, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 8D, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 8E, approval of settlement agreement with T-Mobile. In May of 2008, the district entered into a lease agreement with T-Mobile to lease portions of the district's property for placement of T-Mobile's antenna facilities. As a part of the lease, T-Mobile has an obligation to pay for its antenna facilities power consumption used at the property. However, during the period from June 29, 2010 through April 31, 2021, T-Mobile did not pay for any of its antenna facilities power consumption used at the property. The district has negotiated a settlement for full reimbursement of T-Mobile's power consumption costs during this period. The settlement agreement to T-Mobile will 
uh, T-Mobile will reimburse the district for $67,171.56. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve execution of the settlement agreement with T-Mobile. Thank you. For um, the I'll make a motion. A second. All right, we have a first and a second. Do we have any questions or comments for staff? I want to say something. Um, I want to applaud um, the staff because um, we asked you all to start finding things, to start looking at things deeply, and you have done that. And things like this are coming up that for years have not been caught. So I want to thank you and I applaud you because we're, we're asking for things to happen and they're starting to happen. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. Okay. With that said, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 8E, approval of settlement agreement with T-Mobile, say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 8F, award to RSP 2022-01-05OP. Great. On June 20th, 2021, the Board of Education approved staff to proceed with the construction of new buildings to house all district office departments and functions. On November 23rd, 2021, the district published a request for proposal, project construction management services for construction of new district office. Proposals were received from six qualified firms. The district staff interviewed four firms. After review, the district recommends awarding this contract to California Construction Management Inc. Moss Companies, also known as CCM Moss, at a cost of $1,166,020. The term of the agreement is through February 7th, 2027. However, the contract will end once the project is completed. Um, this project will not be funded by any bond funds. We utilize our um, capital facilities fund for this. It is recommended that the Board of Education award the RFP for the project construction management services for construction of the new district office to the California Construction Management Inc. Moss Companies for the amount of $1,166,020. I will, motion. I will emphatically make that motion. All right, you make the motion. I'll second it. How's that, okay. Eleanor? Sounds great. All right, do we have any questions for staff or comments? I'm just uh, want to just comment, uh, commend staff for bringing this forward. I, I wanted to try and get something going on this ever since I've been on the board since 2008. And um, it's been a struggle, but uh, it's, it's, it's time is finally right. It, it, it takes convergence of circumstances um, and some stick to it in this over these years to, to serve our employees right and get them into good facilities that are going to help them work better and smarter uh, for the families and our students in the district. So I'm, I'm really excited and so happy to see this come to fruition. Thanks, Mike. And I totally agree with you. And uh, um, we're not using any bond funds to do this, but I'm super no. excited because mm -hmm. we're going to, this project is going to provide a space for parents, community, school board, accessibility. I'm, I'm just excited for our employees to have a safe and conducive working environment. I just want to say I'm Wonderful. just happy because at least everybody will be in one place to be able to communicate to work so that we can actually be there to support our families and our students in the way that we really need to so that one person is not saying and forgetting and dropping the ball on one end of it from one end of the street to across the other street. So Thank you, and just let's let's do this as soon as and as fast as we possibly can to to support our students and our families in the an amazing, amazing way that we possibly can. Great. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item eight F, say aye. 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 Motion carries five zero. Moving on to item eight G. Approval of resolution number 25 20, for the 21 22 school year, the sale and disposal of district owned surplus personal property items. Thank you. As part of the elementary furniture project, staff has inventoried surplus district owned personal property and identified the items no longer needed. The disposal process includes multiple steps, including first auctioning the items 
then conducting a private sale. Then we offer the items to charitable organizations. And lastly, we dispose of the surplus property. However, because we've partnered with DEMCO on this project, they are working with IRN or the Reuse Network. The Reuse Network provides furnishings and equipment to charities in the US and around the world. And so in the event that we can't first auction or sell, then IRN will be taking um, our items. The district staff has reviewed the conditions and estimated value of the items listed. Upon review, it has been determined that the value of the items listed exceeds $2,500 in current market value. Approval of this resolution notes that the Board of Education agrees with the staff estimated value and authorizes staff to proceed with a public auction sale, subsequent private sale, donation, and other disposal in accordance with the Education Code provisions. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve resolution number 25 and authorize the district staff to dispose of such property as recommended. Thank you for the explanation. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. All right. All right, we have a first and a second. Do we have any questions for staff? Comments? Seeing none, I, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of item 8C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. <laughs> so that was a long business. All right, moving on to item 9, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Item 9A is ratification of memoranda of understanding for expanded learning opportunities. I'll turn it over to staff. Thank you, Dr. Began. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Dr. Vitale. We are excited to bring forward an opportunity that will allow us to expand our before and after school learning opportunities to nearly 3,000 students across OUSD, uh, effectively 20% of our students at no cost to our families. So the ratification of our MOU for expanded learning opportunities um, allows us to use a new grant funding called the ELOP uh, grant funding source. Um, beginning uh, in January all the way through June this year, and then again for the next uh, two to three years. This will bring an addition of eight before and after school programs to previously uncovered sites. It will bring an expansion of at least 25 before and after school programs, effectively clearing any wait list that currently exists. Um, and it will bring all of our uh, uh, schools K-8 whole to be able to bring a before and after school program at each site, again, at no cost to our families. And then in June, uh, we'll begin looking at how we use the remainder of the ELOP funding for the next two to three years um, to continue providing summer intercession opportunities before and learning before and after school learning opportunities. So we are recommending that the Board of Education ratify the MOU with these providers who operate expanded learning opportunities programs for the 21-22 school year. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I got a first and a second. This is exciting. Any comments or questions for staff? Yeah, just um, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm really glad that we're able to offer this to our community members. You know, before and after school is extremely important. Uh, one really important part of this is that it is an expanded learning opportunity. And so um, I, um, board member Alvarez and I uh, met with staff about what we can do to make sure that our programs are providing the high quality learning opportunities. And so I know that uh, um, we have great programs, but I just want to make sure that we're using this as an opportunity to springboard our students and accelerate their learning um, and enrichment over the next couple of years while we do have this funding, because this is really um, a targeted, tar almost a targeted intervention that we have access to. So I'm really excited. Thanks for bringing this forward and uh, I definitely support. Thank you. All right, any more comments? I just wanna thank you all. Um, like uh, Mr. Joyce said, we just, um, we had a long discussion about this and it's been something that we've been looking forward to and trying to get um, I know we've had wait lists and it's just been kind of crazy with everything and trying to support every student um, with the different things that we're doing. So 
um, as we go through this, as Mr. Joyce said, that we just continue to focus on furthering them so that we can make sure that our students succeed as we know that that's our number one goal um, that as we support before and after doing these things that anything that we need to do to be able to continue to do that, that we would do that um, with that focus always in mind and with that every with every intention of doing the best for the student. So thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, sorry, I, I do have one question. Are we do we have a scheduled date when we're going to get an update on what uh, the staff is thinking about for the summer learning opportunities? Do we know what board meeting we're going to get more information about that? Will it be March or April? Mercedes, did you hear that question? I did. We are actually currently actively uh, talking with our partners uh, for our summer learning programs. We're keeping several things in mind. Uh, we want to make sure that it is targeted to improve uh, student outcomes, uh, especially around literacy and math. Um, at the high school level, we will be offering a six-week session because that is what um, is required to ensure that they can be credit recovery and credit acceleration. Um, at our middle and high schools, we're looking at a four-week uh, session that will be a four-day-a-week, four-day session um, that will be uh, offered to all of our students and with a priority for our students students who are experiencing homelessness and poverty are multilingual learners. And in addition to that, we will have a five week session that will be for our um, uh, students with special needs who are eligible for extended school year. Um, all of those uh, processes are in the works and we will be getting details out to families very soon. So that was a four week session for elementary and middle? Yes, and it will be backing up with the grant that Dr. Sparks just shared with you to expand that with camps and enrichment activities as well during the summer so that there'll be a robust, we have about six weeks, six and a half weeks of summer. Um, and so we'll be able to provide great programming and we're working uh, with Dr. Sparks uh, on this uh, to leverage our grant funding and our ESSER funds to provide a robust summer program. Sounds great. That great. sounds great. I will call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 9A, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries, 5-0. Moving on to policy development 10A, the approval of continuation of electronic or virtual board meetings through the month of March, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve that we stay virtual. A second. Second. I have a first and a second. Do we have any comments, questions? Yes, because I'm going to vote uh, no. I'm just going to give my reason. I think that uh, now that we're down, I think the statewide, the infection rates have come down 60 some percent. The indoor mask mandate's going to sunset here soon. Um, we are definitely need to stay safe and we definitely need to continue to follow all the guidelines, mask, I know our family masks all the time, indoors, uh, sometimes outdoors in crowds. That being said, um, I do believe that we have responsibility to hold this in public and I think we can get significant community input, um, both through pu live public comment and through KOCT. Uh, streaming and still meet the needs of what we're, what we're asked to do. So I will be voting now. And I, the parents and teachers that I've been talking to are able to access these meetings, which are public, virtually, at home, while they're doing things and attend, and also participate in public comment they may not be able to get out and do when we do face-to-face -face meetings. So, I mean, it's I know they can watch it on TV, but the public comment they have to be present for, our public comment is open. So I'm gonna support this for the month of March. Seeing no more comments, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of holding our March meeting virtually, say aye. 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 Oh, no, sorry, not aye. <laughs> Motion carries 4-1, Eric, and thank, thank you. you for providing your, um, your rationale. Uh, I appreciate that. All right, moving on to item 10. Uh, we got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. 
Item 10B, approval of resolution number 26. This is a proclamation for National School Counseling Week. And Trustee Raquel Alvarez, Vice President, would you like to read this proclamation for us before we vote on it? I would love to, thank you. <clears throat> um, proclamation resolution number 26, 2122, National School Counseling Week, School Counseling Better Together. Where school counselors are employed in public and private schools to help students reach their full potential and where school counselors are actively committed to helping students explore their abilities, strengths, interests, and talents at these traits relate to career awareness and development and where school counselors help parents, guardians, caregivers focus on ways to further the education, personal and social growth of their children and where school counselors work with teachers and other educators to help students explore their potential and set realistic goals for themselves and where school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance and complement comprehensive school counseling programs and help students become productive members of society and where comprehensive development school counseling programs are considered an integral part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school. Therefore, the Oceanside Unified School Board of Trustees do hereby proclaim February 7 through 11, 2022 as National Counseling School Week. Counseling Week, sorry. Thank you, Raquel, for reading that. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All right. And I, I have to give a shout out. My son's in middle school and his counselor, Mr. Simi, has been instrumental in helping my son with all kinds of middle school type things that he's experiencing. So those counselors, they work really hard for our kids, not just academically, but supporting their social emotional needs. Any comments or questions for staff? I just want to thank our counselors overall because I have a high schooler and he's been at both schools now, both high schools and at, at both sites, they've been amazing and supportive, not just of my student, but of all students. So I appreciate them and thank them along with the support that they look for our additional, um, our additional groups that are within the district to help our students. And so they seek out to be able to do whatever is best for our students. So I thank you all for everything. You're much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Shout out, shout out to missions, Miss Amanda. And yeah, I mean, it. it is, it's pretty incredible. Uh, the LCAP put forward, the LCAP committee put forward counselors in all of our elementary school sites and, and we're seeing the benefits of it in our kids right now. So it's tremendous. All right, that's what you get when you got three parents on this, <laughs> on the school board. We're all experience it from a different angle. Everybody, I'm going to call for the vote to approve um, this proclamation. All in favor of approving this item, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5 0. Moving on to the next item, 10C, approval of resolution number 27. This is the proclamation for Black History Month. Eleanor has so graciously offered to read this proclamation. Proclamation. Proclamation and recognition of February as Black History Month, resolution number 27, 2021 through 2022. Whereas in 1926, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, noted Black scholar and founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, initiated Negro History Week in the, in the second week of February to conclude or coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. This week has since expanded to be known as Black History Month. And whereas during Black History Month, there is an annual celebration and recognition of achievement and contributions of Black and African Americans, a time for recognizing the civil rights movement, the central role of members of the African diaspora, throughout history in the United States, in California, and locally in Oceanside, in the economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development of our country as artists, scientists, educators, entrepreneurs, influential thinkers, faith leaders, athletes, and political and government leaders. And whereas we cannot ignore nor erase the consequences of our country's history of violence, of discrimination, and of deprivation of Black and African-American people, 
yet we can commit to working together and sharing in the rich culture of this community for the purpose of responsibility, reconciliation, and recognition. And whereas Black History Month is a time for all Americans to remember the stories, teachings, joy, suffering, love, achievement, strength and humanity of Black and African Americans who gave, a, who gave a voice to the daily struggles for freedom, equality, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And whereas Black history reflects a determined spirit of perseverance and cultural pride in its people's struggle to equally share in the opportunities of a nation, which used slavery as an economic driver, squaring with the values of freedom and justice for all people, and that members of the African diaspora and Black and African Americans have participated in every effort to secure, protect, and advance the cause of freedom and civil rights and continues to resist systemic racism. And whereas the Oceanside Unified School District has established departmental diversity goals that are geared towards the ongoing diversifying of our workforce so that it becomes more representative of the students we serve. And whereas our curriculum must reflect the lived experiences of people of different racial, religious, and ethnic groups. And to this end, Oceanside Unified School District has led the way in the development and implementation of an ethnic studies high school course that will benefit all students towards the end of building more inclusive and belonging learning environment. And whereas all students deserve an opportunity to understand the common humanity underlying all people to develop pride in their own cultural identity and heritage and to respect and accept the identity and heritage of others. And to this end, Oceanside Unified School District subscribes to the Fair, Accurate, Inclusive, and Respectful Fair Act, which not only requires the teaching of history to include the challenges, trials, and struggles of Black and African Americans, but also the triumphs, contributions, and excellence of Black and African Americans, inclusive of February and throughout the year and the curriculum. And whereas the district partners with community-based organizations and our school Black student unions and other student-led groups to support the organizing and promotion of Black student success and cultural to further its efforts of forming strong relationships in a culturally appropriate way and to provide feedback and guidance to district leaders on improving outcomes and providing opportunities for Black and African American students. And whereas the Oceanside Unified School District has taken an equity stance regarding our commitment to closing the achievement and opportunity gap for Black and, American, and African Americans and creating an educational environment where all students can benefit equally from the educational programs offered and where Oceanside Unified School District is working towards eliminating the racial predictability and disproportionality on all aspects of education through the establishment of a culturally proficient educator committee update and current board policies and ethnic studies course and implementation of the FAIR Act. Therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Oceanside Unified School District hereby recognizes the month of February 2022 as Black History Month and encourages all educators to be reflective and commemorate this occasion with appropriate ceremonies, instructional activities and programs and, and to consider how these same practices can extend beyond the boundaries of February. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor, for reading that important proclamation. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a first and a second. Any comments? 
All right, seeing none, I'll call so, for the vote. Well, I do have a comment. Um, sure. It's just a, a historical fact that in 1976, Gerald, President Gerald Ford extended Negro History Week to be um, Black History Month. And he made the statement that it should be taught year round and embedded in the curriculum. And on a more personal note, I really would love to see that in Oceanside as well as other school districts. Sometimes, you know, I've heard educators say, um, well, I don't know how to teach it, or um, I'm afraid to teach it. You know, it's, it's, it's mandatory. It's part of the curriculum. And it's not just history starting with 1619 in terms of Blacks' contribution to history, but, you know, the pre-European period, the medieval period. So, you know, it requires research and requires us to um, support those, those educators who are doing this. Thank you. Thanks, Eleanor. Eric? I'm just, I'm just really proud of our district for taking a strong stand in this and providing not only the safe environment for our teachers to teach, where across the nation right now, teachers are being told not to teach a true history and because it might make somebody uncomfortable. So I'm really proud of our district for taking a strong stance, teach a true history, teach it to everyone. Everyone needs to know it. Um, I'm really proud to be part of this effort. So proud of this board for taking this strong stance. Thanks, Eric. With that, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of supporting resolution number 27, the proclamation for Black History Month, say aye. 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 Motion carries five zero. Moving on to item D, adoption of board policy 0470, COVID-19 mitigation plan. We do have one public speaker in this, but I'll let staff explain. Yes, thank you, Dr. Begin. Um, this this uh, recommendation puts into policy what the district uh, OUSD has already been uh, doing and what we've already used as our approach and our plan and our practices and effectively uh, looks at the CDPH, California Department of Public Health and Cal OSHA recommendations and ensures that we have a safety mitigation plan um, uh, as, as a district wide approach. So this really just solidifies um, our COVID-19 mitigation plan that we've been operating with since March of 2020 and makes it formally board policy. So we recommend that the Board of Education adopt board policy 0470, our COVID-19 mitigation plan. Thank you, Dr. Sparks. Um, it looks like we have one public comment, and Yes, from Colleen Carter. Hi, Colleen. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. My, good evening. My name is Colleen Carter, and I'm a teacher here in OUSD. A little over a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. During that time, I have undergone a surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and another surgery. I feel like I make medical decisions every month, if not every week. Some are life altering and some are life and death. During all of this, I had to make a decision on whether or not to get the COVID vaccine. Because of complications with the chemo, I decided not to get it while we figure out my ongoing medical issues. I was so grateful that I was given the option to test weekly and I diligently did this since the beginning of the year. Due to my illness, I had to take a medical leave last year that used up all of my accumulated sick days. I was able to return this year with 10 days but with three oncologists, multiple doctor's appointments, surgery in December, and life in general, I had used half of my days before we even went on break. Unfortunately, I got COVID the day I was supposed to return. This is when I realized that this district has a two-tier caste system, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. The CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, has stated publicly that the vaccine does not stop the transmission of COVID, especially the Omicron variant. It is also publicly documented in the CDC study that the viral load in a vaccinated person is the same as in an unvaccinated person. This is evident by the fact that vaccinated boosted employees are getting COVID the past couple of weeks. Some have even come to school not knowing they had COVID and found out they were infected while on campus. So we could say we're all in the same boat, except we are not. The days that the vaccinated teachers were out sick, OUSD is covering their sick days with CARES Act money. People like me that are not vaccinated, but still work hard and 
and followed the district directive to test each week, do not get COVID sick days, and they wipe out what we have left. And if you run out, they dock your pay. This policy is just plain wrong, especially in the light of the variance and changing science. The district received CARES Act money to help with COVID expenses related to it and could use the money for everyone equitably instead of only those the district seems to value. And to make it worse is to know that the district is using this money to buy furniture for classrooms. Is that what the money was supposed to be used for? I don't think it makes the employees feel valued. This policy, policy should be reevaluated because even though it is too late for me, I know there are many unvaccinated people who it can impact. Do the right thing, unless you really do believe that we are not all equal. If you believe that the unvaccinated deserve to be punished, that is sad. I truly hope that this is not your belief, but if it, it is, be sure to next time when you say how much you appreciate and value our staff and teachers, clarify you only appreciate those you deem worthy. Stacey, may I say, I need to say one thing. Ms. Sure. Carta, will, will you please give um, Todd McAteer a call? Uh, there have been some updates, I think, and updated information you might need to know. So he is the Associate Superintendent of Human Resources. So, so please call him tomorrow. That's all I needed to say. Okay. I, does, does anybody have any questions for Dr. Sparks? Or Dr. Norman, I just saw her pop up. Regarding this policy. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. First and a second. Do I have comments, questions? I'm looking at my board colleagues here. I, I am concerned when we hear from one of our um, employees that has a medical condition that was unable to get vaccinated, that they're running out of sick days and they're not able to access the COVID days. So that, that concerns me. So I'm hoping that Dr. Mercateur can work with Ms. Carta on that. I, I, other... have, I have a question in terms of um, our um, staff running out of sick days. For me, I've been in that you know, position, but um, doesn't the district promote or have um, extended sick days, half days, and if you don't have those days, is the district able or people in the district able to um, donate their days, or at least one day from their own sick leave to that person? Catastrophic, you know, sick, sick day Catastrophic program. leave bank is what you're calling it. Right. The, the yeah. district does have a catastrophic leave plan, and we do allow employees that meet the requirements who have enough bank time to make donations. Uh, that window is actually open right now this month where employees certificate and classified. Uh, both those unions agreed to reopen that because we are running low on time to be available for other employees. So that's currently open. The window is open for all our employees to donate to that bank. Thanks, Dr. McIntyre. So, there, so that's not a constant thing that goes on all the time, but they could at any point in time just decide, hey, I can do this and I, I have the available time that I can donate then? No, it's in both contracts with CSCA and ODA that it's defined that when that window opens and employees are notified that they can make donations. I don't see any more questions. I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of supporting board policy, I'm not looking for it, D-0470 um, COVID-19 mitigation plan, say aye. 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 Did I hear from Eric and Raquel? I think I'm going to, um, I think I have to say no on this. Um, I'm I'm only talking only for myself, only because of the different things that um, I've had to go through with all of this stuff. 
and having a delay of just getting the vaccines of certain things, you know, getting my, my booster and all that stuff. So, um, I worry that, um, we're not looking out for everybody because I, I am that all means all. And, um, so unless there's something else that somebody can share that helps me understand how we're not, um, how, what I'm not seeing to understand this, the, to, to go different with what Ms. Carta has shared, then um, I would have to stay with a no. All right, motion carries four one. All right, moving on to the next item. Thank you for sharing, by the way, board. Um, is the approval of revisions to board policy 3600 consultant. Thank you, Dr. Begin. This policy is being updated to reflect new law AB 2257 which recodifies the three-part test established to determine whether a person providing services for remuneration should be classified as an employee or an independent contractor. The update also reflects new laws AB 2257 and AB 323, which establish exceptions to use the three-part test. Lastly, the requirement to afford equal opportunity for contracts was revised to add ethnicity and reflect new law AB 3364, which changes the term military and veteran status to veteran or military status. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the proposed revision to board policy 3600 consultants. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a question. What were the... Um, the names of those bills, the letters, AB334 and AB2257, and then AB323, and AB3364. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of approving revisions to board policy 3600, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. So our next item on the agenda has two public comments. It is the approval of revisions to board policy 3100 for the budget. I'll turn it over to staff to explain. Thank you, Dr. Begin. This policy is being updated to revise the section regarding general fund reserves. The proposed revision updates the district's reserve requirement to align with CSBA recommendation and is consistent with the percentage or amount specified in California Code regulations, which requires a 3% reserve for districts with ADA of 1,001 to 30,000 students. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the proposed revision to the board policy 3100 budget. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna, um, we have two public comments. I'll turn it over to Ann. So we have Michael Richardson and Todd Madison. Right, so I'm not seeing Michael Richardson, but I'm seeing Todd. Hello, hey, Todd, Begin, good evening. Begin, uh, Zoom is having trouble promoting Michael Richardson. I'm continuing to work on it, but we may have to use just the allow to talk function. So we can, I'll continue working on it while Todd speaks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moon. All right, hello, good evening, Todd. I'll All right. turn it over to you. Sure, thank you very much. Um, I am unmuted, good. <laughs> so um, so first, thanks, Anne, for fixing my mess up with the Google Form thing, appreciate that. Um, but tonight, so what we're really talking about is spending down our savings account, reducing the balance, so we can minimize the political impact of having given out $10 million in bonus raises in October, isn't it? I'm sure you remember the 10 million you approved and I also remember the 8 million in future cuts from our kids you approved the next month as a result of that. That allowed for a nice bump for those needy people making comfortable six figure total compensation already, including our superintendent up to about $356,000 a year, and the president of our teachers union who will likely end up over $200,000 a year. And the millions in future cuts, they'll come from kids where almost 60% qualify for free and reduced lunch with a significant percentage of English learners, but the impact on low-income kids is just incidental to our board, isn't it? One would also think the recent near-death experience with revenue projections at the beginning of COVID followed by the dire news on enrollment declines would prompt us to have a larger rainy day fund, not a smaller one. No sane family would come close to having their home foreclosed on, finally get back on their feet, and then decide it was time to have less cushion in the bank, not more. But then having 
having been on the state's bankruptcy watch list for almost five years demonstrates the lack of financial sanity in our report, doesn't it? The windfalls of COVID, the recent budget surplus make it easy to paper over the problems this year. Following the numbers is hard, but all criticism aside, I'm sure Dr. Vitali, Dr. Norman, the entire rest of the cabinet know what our long-term outlook looks like. They know what red ink means and they know what to do about it also, but they won't. Instead, we see a proposal to reduce our reserve for economic uncertainties as if economic uncertainties aren't gonna happen. That means spend down your rainy day fund in English to the rest of us. So does that sound like solid financial management to anyone? There are a lot of families out there that were very happy to have had some savings set aside in spring 2020. When campaigning, I spoke to people at their wits end over lack of work or finding ways to take care of kids while doing what work they could find. No one in education had those concerns, of course. They simply continued to get paid and give themselves bonus raises at that. For those who may be considering running for other offices, you will hear about your vote on this one in that election. Cutting our reserves right now is really just another bit of financial mismanagement and a long trail, not something that looks good on a resume for higher office. We know what the objective is. Allow the district to give itself more money while minimizing what you need to cut from our kids to afford it by spending from our savings. The fact that that helps you make, make you look good now by putting the future in danger is meaningless, isn't it? So it's just another demonstration of the reasons why we need school choice. Let parents choose a school that puts their kids' interests first, californiaschoolchoice.org, and volunteer. Thank you. All right. Mr. Moon, were you able to get our other speaker? Michael? Um, he, I'm getting a message that he's declining to be promoted to panelists, but I'm going to open his mic just in case. He does want to speak. Stand by. So, hey. Mr. Richardson, um, talking is permitted by you right now. If you want to, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, Michael. Great. I'm glad you're here. Sorry for the technology. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I I support whatever everything Todd said. You know, you people. Here we go again. You people are uh, stealing from our kids in order to pay yourselves and your cronies. And, you know, you need to undo the bonuses you gave to the teachers and yourselves, but which you didn't deserve. And I, I, I'm just so disgusted with this board. We are going to do everything we can. We're gonna work our tails off to vote your people out of control of our kids' money because you don't deserve it. I graduated from Jefferson Junior High School in 1955. Wow. And, 19, and Oceanside High School in 1959 with honors. Went to San Diego State, graduated with distinction. Went to Cal, to University of California. Uh, and all these things were possible because of the great education and Oceanside schools back then. Now they're in the toilet. And I want to, uh, I, I just will do everything we can to get rid of you. You are all despicable, disgusting, despicable all people. All right, Michael. Um, we I'm, have families and children watching this. So keep, you can continue your public comment, but keep it civil, please. We do have families and children watching. All right, I think he's done for this evening. So moving on, I will, we have to vote on this item. Do we have any comments or questions? No, I don't. I support this item. It makes perfect sense. We are still maintaining our 3% level that the state mandates that we hold on to. And uh, we do not have any issues to where we would need to get that delta between the two and the and the three and the 5%, um, if COVID wasn't it, where the state would come in and take all our money, I don't know what would be uh, a circumstance where uh, we or other districts would need to have that little cushion of reserve. So LA City School District has a 1% reserve, again, set by the state. So I'm just following the state rules and that's 3% for us. And that so makes you made a motion? Is that your motion? I do make that motion to carry that. I'll second it. Vote. Thank you. I'll I, I just want to do a brief comment on this one. Um, at first, thinking about reducing the, the reserve 
Um, I wasn't was initially concerned about it, but this falls in line with well, best practices across the region and the state. The reserve itself, 3%, is, is for the most dire emergency. This doesn't mean that we need to, um, we're going to do anything out of the ordinary. We're going to continue to look at our budget to make sure that we fall in line and and uh, have a long-term positive outlook for our budget. So we take that very seriously, and we're going to be doing that over the next few months as we develop our budget in June. So stay tuned. If you're concerned about this, keep coming back. We're going to have good conversations about it. And I just want to share that, you know, working with several school districts, we need to be competitive. There's a huge staffing shortage. During the pandemic, it was our employees, our teachers, and our classified group keeping us afloat, working with the families and the students. And in order to attract, retain, and recruit highly effective employees, we have to stay competitive, and they work hard. So I, you know, people can say all they want about the budget. This 3% is what's required by the state. What we had before was above that, and it threw us that third year into this qualified status, call it a self-inflicted wound. And, and so now we're just aligning with the state. This is one of the different ways that we're approaching our budget to make sure that we're financially fiscal moving forward. So yes, we are responsible. Any more comments or I'll call for the vote. All in favor of item 10F, approval revisions to board policy 3100, budget, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Sorry, moving on to our next item, 10G, adoption of new board policy 6146-1, high school graduation requirements. Yes, good evening. This uh, board policy is going to reflect a new law, AB 204, which uh, allows uh, districts to be able to award graduation uh, and uh, high school diplomas to those students who have been impacted by COVID-19 um, based on the closures and remote learning. It allows us to award uh, honorary degrees or honorary diplomas to terminally ill students and students who are visiting from other countries. It also allows us to uh, offer and uh, provide a fifth year of instruction and credit recovery for students so that they can achieve their high school diploma. This board policy reflects our current practice and we recommend approval of this board policy to align with our current practices in our district. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Any questions for staff or comments? All right. You're muted, Stace. Sorry about Stacey. that. Okay, I'll try that again. I'll try that again. <laughs> it was my turn and I'm not a boomer yet. So anyways. <laughs> All right. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 10G, adoption of new board policy for high school graduation, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 10H, approval of revisions to board policy 6159, individualized education program. Yes, this policy is an update for the policy that was originally adopted in 2011. It reflects the importance and the belief of the board to provide a free appropriate public education, often referred to as FAPE, to all students who reside within the Oceanside Unified School District attendance um, boundary areas. This includes students who have been suspended or expelled from students, students who are uh, incarcerated, and also for students who range in age from 18 to 21, who uh, need additional support as uh, adults with uh, specific disabilities. It is recommended that we approve the proposed revisions to board policy 6159. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a first and a second. Do I have any questions or comments for staff? 
Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 10H, revisions to individualized education programs, say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Motion carries 5-0. Next item on the agenda, 10I, approval of revisions to board policy 6159.1, procedural safeguards and complaints for special education. Yes, this revision to the policy, which was uh, last adopted in 2010, um, recognizes the obligation of the district to provide a free appropriate public education or FAPE, and that we encourage that all uh, disputes or concerns be resolved at the lowest informal level, and that uh, families are able to provide uh, any uh, information that might be needed for a due process hearing uh, to make sure that the board will be informed of those due process hearings. We recommend uh, approval of this revision to board policy 6159.1 to reflect our current practice. Thank you, Dr. Levy, for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All right, I have a second. All right, any questions or comments for staff? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 10 I say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 10J, approval of revisions to board policy 6159.2, non-public, non-secretarian, school, and agency services for special education. Thank you. This policy was last updated in 2010, and this uh, covers our non-public uh, schools, our non-public schools that serve some of our students who have the most severe needs, and requires that, that we verify that these non-public schools provide staff with training uh, for the unique behavioral needs of students uh, who are being served by the public uh, non-public school, and also to make sure that when a FAPE, an offer of FAPE is required, for a non-public school that we do pay the full amount of that tuition as outlined in law. This will, uh, re will basically uh, reflect our current practice and we recommend approval of the revisions to policy 6159.2. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. First and second, any questions or comments for staff? All right, I'm looking at my colleagues here. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 10J, revisions to board policy 6159.2, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5-0. All right, moving on to public comments on non-agenda items. I believe we have five individuals that will be speaking tonight. Um, we are happy to receive comments. Um, about items and issues um, that are not on tonight's agenda. And um, I just want to remind you, you have three minutes. And I just want to remind you that we have 70 people watching tonight. So just try to keep it civil with your language because there are families and students watching and we want to model positive behavior. So Anne, can you call up our first speaker? Okay. Uh, we, like you said, we have five. And that will be Todd Madison, Patty Kay, Patrick Higuera, Rosa, Rosie Higuera, and Katie Taylor. Todd Madison. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks again. So tonight I'd like to talk again about having a board that actually puts our kids' interest first, above, over and above the special interests and the adults in the district. Oceanside Unified has great schools. Uh, my kids, my three kids attended school there from kindergarten through graduation. They got a great education from some wonderful teachers. My wife and I know a lot of great teachers, support staff, principals, and administrators, just the best of people. Unfortunately, over those 17 years, we've seen the district move farther away from what's doing best for our kids versus what benefits themselves, the adults in the district. Our district has forgotten who provides the money that goes into their paychecks, we the parents, and who is supposed to be their first priority, which is our kids. The school board in front of us is supposed to be the voice of parents in our district, but as we've seen so much, particularly in the last couple of years, they appear to be more the voice of employees and adults in the district, not so much parents and kids. That was so evident just a few months ago. Our board was faced with a budget that projected a need for millions in cuts from our kids in the future. Hey, let me know when I got like the response, 
is to make those cuts deeper by adding almost $10 million to them to further pad the compensation of people mostly well into six figures already. Is that kids first? If you wanna see where someone's priorities lie, take a look at what they spend their money on. If you recognize this, if you feel education dollars should be spent on education, if you're a person who sees problems and wants to fix them, how about helping fix this one? How would you like to run for school board this year? This year is an election year. It's time for parents to step up and take control of our board to make it work for our kids, not for special interests. Districts one, three, and four are up for election. The district website has maps. If you're not sure which district you're in, go to the Board of Education section. If you're listening to this, you care about the education of our kids. Is it time to step up and run? I'm a co-director of the Oceanside Parent Association, and the Parent Association is planning on doing what it can to support kids first candidates in the next election. If you'd like to discuss what running for board is all about, email us. The email address is oceanside.usd at parentassociation.net. That's oceanside.usd at parentassociation.net. And lastly, we all know that school choice is the real solution. Real power comes when parents can simply choose a different school if their board, their district, or their union is putting themselves first, not our kids. We need signatures on our petition to get it on the ballot. We're doing great so far, but we've got a big job ahead of us. Join us to help that by going to californiaschoolchoice.org, signing up to help, getting out, getting signatures for the effort. That's californiaschoolchoice.org. Let's take back our education system, make it work for our kids, not for the special interests for a change. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Patty Kay. Thank you. I think this will be of interest to all the uh, those of you on the board as parents and grandparents. Um, it, uh, there is Assembly Bill 1785 that's going up to the state and it is called the Parents Bill of Rights. And it simply um, re ensures what most of us expect. And some of the items included would be for parents to be allowed to be involved in any teachings related to sexual health education and HIV prevention and the procedure to have their child opt out if, if they wish. They should be allowed an annual newsletter to learn about the nature and purpose of clubs and activities offered at their minor child school. The school would post information for parents regarding the following topics. Again, how to opt out of the comprehensive sexual education program, how to get school choice options, offered by the local education agency about immunization requirements, how to review statewide standardized assessment results. And those parents listening, I would like to refer you to click on the 4L on tonight's agenda to view the current test scores. The Parents Bill of Rights would allow the parents to inspect instructional materials, including curriculum materials. These are all different things that we've come to expect, but it just reinforces in an actual Bill of Rights. So all parents listening, please be aware of this bill that is due at your state assembly at 1785 to reinforce your parents' bill of rights. And to that end, I uh, request the school board, since the parents are acknowledged as the first teacher, that under uh, number three reports, along with the union and uh, the school board members that you have for equity's sake, of course, um, a parent's report also at each board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Patrick. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you. The little, the little children were brought to him and at that he might put his hands on them and pray, but the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Furthermore, if anyone causes any of these little ones to stumble, it would be better for them to, to hang a millstone around their neck and be plunged into the depths of the sea. Those are my words. That's from Matthew 19. Julie, Eleanor, Mike. Eric, Stacy, and Raquel. I hope you heard what I just said. BLM, CRT, 27 genders. What are you trying to teach our kids? Why are you teaching this garbage? If, if us as parents want our kids to know this stuff, we'll teach them that. That's not up to you, okay? That's not up to you at all. Why are you using your school platform to further your political agenda? That is... When did that ever come as being good? Teach the basics. It sounds like you guys have lost your way, your moral compass. It sounds like you've lost your way of what you're actually supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, U.S. history, our Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. And why are you putting a health clinic in a junior high? What is health equity training? Youth-specific services? Leave the medical issues to the hospitals. Again, your focus is reading, writing, arithmetic, U.S. history, the U.S. Constitution. You guys have lost your focus. You need to refine your focus. Our scores are in the are in the tank. Like you know, my wife already told you guys. You can't balance the budget. Everything you pass, you pass everything. I haven't heard one denial yet. Everything is. Oh, I'll take a vote. I okay, that's five to nothing. Do you guys ever turn down anything? Can can you raise the scores? Can you balance the budget? Stop spending. What are you guys doing? I guess uh the 1.1 million dollars on your new office is more uh, you know, that's more needed than our kids' education, right? I mean, you guys need a, you know, air conditioning and a warm place to sit, I guess. Eleanor, last month when uh, you ended the meeting, I believe your comment was, we are doing the best we can. Well, you know what? Your best is heartbreakingly sad because you guys, you guys are, it's just ridiculous what you're doing. You're cowards because you won't see us in person. Oh, I think it's great to stay on, uh, on, on view. Yeah, whatever. You guys are shameful. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Uh, shamed. And I'm sure your parents would be of you too. Thanks. Thank you. Rosie, Rosie, all right. So, um, I see that the superintendent can uh, vote for someone to be a delegate for region 17. Um, I ask that Eleanor Evans not be nominated to be um, a delegate. She has proven that she is for CRT. She's for LGBTQ, as well as Eric Joyce. Eric Joyce and Eleanor Evans um, both um, are very progressive. They do not fight for families or our, our conservative values. Our family values are for marriage, for family. We're not for all of this confusion, gender confusion, and all of this racist teaching. You guys do really need to bring up the test scores. Um, I understand Eric Joyce is running for city council. Please do not vote for him. Um, he can't balance a budget here. And I don't know um, what he would do in the city council. I, I don't think that that is what we need in our city council. If he can't do a good job here um, with our school board budget or focus on the needs that we're telling you that we want as parents. We want you guys to teach, stick to the facts of um, the constitution and history, bring up those math and language arts score, scores and science. Um, if you go on the website, parents, I would love for you to see all of the LGBTQ, the respect online course. All of this is teaching kids um, all of this bill. Um, and they have no place teaching our kids any of this stuff. Whatever happened to teaching our kids about abstinence and waiting for marriage? There is a concept right there. Instead of handing out condoms and promoting abortion and all this other ridiculousness, um, you guys have all proved as a board that you are not for our children. We need competent people 
on our board and we need we need a new superintendent that has conservative values that actually fights for families because families are the foundation of our society and they're the building block of America. And so you guys are the guardians and the keepers of the gate and you have proven um, Mike Blessing, Raquel Alvarez, Stacy Begin. I don't know what you guys have, do, have done to help further promote families. Families are so important and our voices are not being heard. So it sounds like we do as parents, we do need to run for these positions. And I hope that many of you do. And those of you that don't, I hope that you pull your kids out of school and vote for school of choice so that $14,000 per child can be given to you and you can send your child to private school or homeschool them with your values and your family morals. The school does not have the right to teach our kids all of this crap. So I want you parents to show up. I want you to get involved and I want you to know what's going on and let the school board know that this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Thank you. Katie Taylor. Hello, Katie. You have to unmute yourself, Katie. Okay, I found the right button. Great. Okay, so I just wanted to say, Eric Joyce has decided he has done all the damage he can do at the school board. And now he's busted our budgets at the school board, given teachers raises, you know, he's helped sell school property. So to avoid that the school board or the district will be taken over by the San Diego County because of their insane management of the school board budget. But let me just warn Eric, uh, if he gets on city council, you know what, people, they have to meet in person and they don't wear a mask there, even though Eric tonight even spoke how much he believes in masks. Yet if you go to his campaign websites, there's pictures of him cheek to cheek, standing right next to kids with no mask on and they have no mask on. So I'm just telling you everybody, he says one thing at a school board, but he does something else when he's promoting himself for city council. The other thing about city council, there's gonna be a lot more eyes on the money. I wish more parents had the eyes on the money at this school board, but it won't be that way on the city council. You just can't throw things to unions the way you've done on the school board. People are gonna be watching the waste and they won't tolerate what's happened in city council because the city council has a conservative backbone that wouldn't tolerate this. I'm also very concerned about the board and staff members who spoke tonight. Does anybody understand what a grant is? If it's a state or federal grant, it's not free money. That money came from a taxpayer. And this is the problem. You're teaching kids everything is free. You're promoting everything you do. Oh, it's a grant. Don't worry about it. We got a grant. It doesn't cost us anything. Well, it costs somebody something. And this is what blows me away. The absolute ignorance of the Oceanside School Board staff and the school board themselves. And that's why you guys keep just running this board to the ground financially. And I'll tell you what, if any of you would watch the economic markets, Mayor Matt Hall at the city council meeting tonight in Carlsbad warned, warned the city of the inflation impact, the cost of rising water prices and everything else and to watch their budget. budget. Not one person here tonight has expressed any concern about the spending, the overspending, and the inflation that everybody sees every day when they're out on the street that's going to impact the cost over this next year. So I just hope everybody go, votes for school choice, takes the $14,000, and gets their kids into a good school that really wants to teach. And I think Rosie Higuera, who just spoke, man, do I agree with her 1,000%. This board is teaching stuff they have no right to be teaching our children. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, that concludes our public comment tonight. Um, our last item on the agenda is a board and staff discussion about the election of the 2022 CSBA Region 17 Delegate Assembly candidate. I'm going to hand this over to Eleanor. You're going to hand it over to me, Stacey. Oh, I'm going to hand it over to you. Sorry. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to lead this vote on uh, Delegate Assembly for the California School Board Association for Region 17. 
and our own Eleanor Evans um, is an incumbent and would like to serve on Delegate Assembly uh, once again. Uh, she is one of nine people uh, for whom we may cast a vote. And so uh, this board just needs to agree on up to nine people um, to vote for. So um, you have uh, the names and the information and you also might may want to recommend to one another um, if you know any of the people, uh, you might want to endorse them. So I just need you all to, en to engage in a discussion and select up to nine people to serve on our Region 17 Delegate Assembly. I'm in a very um, fortunate position in that I know all but maybe perhaps two of the people. I've met with them, talked with them, in some cases even worked with them in other capacities. So. Um, I feel very fortunate. I know Eric may have some, some um, folks in mind, but I'm looking at in terms of where CS, CSBA was when I first went on the board and where it is now. And with the team we have now, we've been able to move CSBA forward. We've been able to make it more viable in the community. Um, we're still pushing towards full fair and, and full funding for our schools. And it's become less of a quote unquote, I'll just say sewing circle, okay? And more of a, a viable organization that's um, answerable to the community, that's involved with the community and, and is making changes. So from my perspective, you know, we're a team, we collaborate, we communicate, and um, I think we're doing wonderful work. As a member of CSBA, I am, uh, and I was appointed that I didn't ask for it or was even aware of the equity um, chair. And for the first time, you know, we see an organization that is more inclusive and is really concerned about each and every child and really wants quality public education, okay? Um, I don't know if we want to go name by name or what. Do you have recommendations, Eleanor? I really do. Okay. Can you say those names so Julie can record them? And then if any of the other board members want to add to those? Okay. Maria Betancourt, Castaneda, or Castaneda. Mm. National City, National uh, School Board, Eleanor Evans, myself, um, Oceanside Unified School Board, Umberto, Gormilan, San Isidro School, School District, Claudine Jones, Carlsbad Unified School District, Jiwa Mook, Del Mar School District, Tamara Otero, Cajon Valley School District, and Marla Stritch, and I mispronounced her name, Stritch, okay, and Sunitas Union School District. And that's, those are the folks that I um, nominate. I would like to add Michelle Gates to that from National School District. Oh boy, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> Hi, do we, we have too it. many? Yeah, I have Marco Amaral and Lucia Garte that I'd like to add to that. But I did agree on Tamara Otero and Umberto and Marla. So those three were on my list as well that were previously nominated. At nine, I think that's nine. Is that Julie. nine even? Eric, who did right you Right now say? we have 10 names uh, up for consideration. <sighs> uh, three names were uh, double checked. And so um, if you wanna go with those three names that were double checked, it's Tamara, Marla, and Umberto. And then um, the other ones all have uh, one vote. And if you want me to repeat those names, I can. Brock, you were gonna say something? Uh, what did, who did Eric nominate? 
I, I nominated Marco Amaral from South Bay and Lucy Ugarte from, um, I think she's from National. Lucy Ugarte is from Chula Vista. Chula Vista, thank you. Lucy in particular, I've, I've uh, collaborated with over the last three years. She's been really supportive and helpful. So do you want to like push her as the ninth one, Eric? I'm going for Michelle Gates. So since I don't have, I get to add, I only have two, Eleanor Evans and Michelle Gates. So Michelle's an educator. She's a teacher, very similar to Eric in another school district. I'm all for people with education background stepping into board member roles. So I'd like to support her. Um, so Trustee Evans, do you have anyone that's on your borderline? <laughs> that's on my borderline? Yeah, we have 10. We can do one, we can do nine, you know. Um, I don't remember how many everybody put forward. If I would have thought we would be over the, the nine limit, I would have thought of a more systematic way to do this. <laughs> yeah, we, we never have been. So Marla, Tamara, and Umberto got two endorsements. Uh, Marco, Maria, Eleanor. Uh, does anyone want to give Eleanor another endorsement so we can put her into the done category? Anyone? Oh, Eleanor. Either? Yes, Stacy. Okay, Eleanor. Rock. Okay. So you have uh, four that are for sure. And we have five votes left and up for consideration. You have Marco, Maria, Michelle, Claudine, Jiwa, and Lucy. Or do we want to go with all nine? We currently have, have 10 up for consideration, Eleanor. There's someone you'd like to remove from your list, Eleanor? Well, Maria Betancourt Castaneda. If you remove that person, uh, then we are at uh, nine. Do we want to move forward with those nine? Marco, Eleanor, Michelle, Umberto, Claudine, Jiwa, Tamara, Marla, and Lucy. Is that good? Do we not have Michelle on there? Do we say Michelle? Okay. Yeah, Michelle's, uh, she's one of them, yes. She's in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Stacy's one pick, uh, Eleanor's two picks. And I'm sorry, uh, Eric's two picks, and then the other picks were by uh, Eleanor. Recommendations. Sounds good to me. Do we need a vote on it? Mm. Yeah, I think so. And I think we do need a vote on that, right? This will be this will be our slate of people. Right. So we yes. do need a motion and a second to. I'll make a motion to approve those nine folks that we that Julie just named off. Second. Second. Thanks, Mike. So we have a first and a second. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of supporting those nine TSBA delegates, say aye. 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 All right. We have consensus. Five zero. All right. With that said, does anybody have any final words for tonight? Thanks again for the office. That's uh, it's going to be a winner. Everybody's going to love it. Thank you. I just want to put a shout out to our parents and our families. Um, please support your schools right now as they're getting back into their fundraising. Um, I know our counts are down in our PTAs and PTOs and our boosters that we have within our schools. And so I ask that you support your schools in any possible way. Um, 
as they're getting they're doing out these dinner nights out and fundraising and everything but be a part of your your PTAs and PTOs I mean that's where you get your voices heard too and how you get back into your DPAC meetings and and into all those um, committee meetings that we have within the community and how you get you know you you're making sure that you're in you're doing the surveys and you're understanding the surveys and you're giving the feedback in the survey so just um, get back into those things with your students and for your your for your students those are important things to be able to support your school sites as you support the staff um, with everything that they do because they do so much for our students as it is and so just to be able to support them in different ways and just support your students and everything and just appreciate everybody that's around there and at your school site so um, it's a difficult thing I know it's hard sometimes because we do so much as parents anyway but to add one more thing to your plate sometimes it's just another thing but I know we, you know, we did PTA and PTO and all those things for years as parents, you know, when my, when my son was in elementary and they're hard and, but the support is to get the support is even harder. So making sure that you're a part of that is important. So just, just get out there and reach out and how you can be a part of that to each of your school sites. Thank you. Thanks, Raquel. I want to thank staff for the presentations and all the diligence they did with bringing us the information that we requested at our last board meeting for this board meeting. So thank you. I'll just say, utilize our services. We have vaccines, free vaccines in the city, right up the street from the DO, and right up the street from Oceanside High School, almost every day of the week. Walk-ups are welcome, use it. We have low vaccination rates in our city compared to the rest of the county. So let's get those vaccination rates up. Let's keep each other safe. Thank you. Great. All right. With that said, I'm going to adjourn the me meeting at 8.40 p.m. Thank you, board colleagues. Have a great night. night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, night everybody. Good night.